Hello, everybody, and welcome to the New Flame Sports Podcast. I am your host, Andrew, along with Kareem and Dean to give their analysis on the NBA. Uh, speaking of the NBA, let's get right into it with Game 5 happening tonight at 9 p.m. Uh, Kareem and Dean, if you want to go ahead and give a little analysis and uh, on this matchup. And, uh, yeah, take it away. All right, so it's been a great series so far uh, for the Lakers, to say the least. Um, so Miami's coming into Game 5 down 3-1. We all know LeBron knows what it's like to be down 3-1 and one and then win the finals, could I say. But, I mean, I think the real formula for them is get the ball in the hands of Jimmy Butler. We saw that in Game 3, uh, triple-double, 40 points. Uh, the kid went off, or I guess he's an older guy now, I bet. He's been bounced around the league a lot, but he's finally found his place in Miami. Um, Chicago didn't respect him. Uh, lots of places had the talent, and they just didn't use him effectively. Uh, Eric Spolstra clearly knows how to use uh, Jimmy Butler. And, uh, yeah, tonight should be a very fun game. Excited to see uh, what Tyler Hero can do. Um, Kendrick Nunn, he's played a pretty big part. Uh, helping this team with injuries sort of sort such as Goran Dragic and Bam. Of course, Bam came back, but um, yeah, uh, that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna pass it on to Dean now for what he has to say. Um, I'm gonna uh, echo the same thing that um, Kareem was saying. Um, I definitely agree. Um, Eric Spolstra, the head coach of the Miami Heat, definitely knows how to use Jimmy Butler. We saw it when he had the uh, big three. Now we're seeing it. He knows how to utilize players like Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, um, uh, Duncan, and um, really, he's just a great coach in general. He uses his best players to really make other players that may not be as good better on the floor. And on the other side, with the uh, uh, Lakers, um, you know, uh, uh, the Clippers were supposed to. Uh, that was definitely the NBA's favorite. But um, the Lakers are really showing them who's the best team in L.A. It's not Sacramento. It's not Golden State. It's not um, uh, It's not the Clippers. The best team in California is the Lakers. And they sh- they're showing that by uh, making it to the NBA Finals. Up 3-1 going into Game 5. Uh, I still have some hope for Miami. Mm-hmm. But uh, if LeBron gets, uh, I think, his fifth ring, I think uh, I'll also be happy with that. Uh, a few notes that I want to add is... Um... I, I could see Miami winning of like maybe tonight's game, but I honestly don't see them winning three in a row against, like Dean said, the best team on paper in the league. Uh, so it's going to be tough. I Miami could pull it out, but you know I, I don't think that they'll be able to win the whole series. They could win a few games, like I said, but yeah, uh, game five of the NBA Finals is tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, into the NFL. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to watch a bunch of the games that happened this week because I had a baseball game. Uh, so, Kareem and Dean, you, you team had a thriller with the Cowboys. You know, it came down to the last minute. Uh, not really, but it was... Pressure high there. Oh, yeah, high pressure. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to pass it on to you guys to talk about that game. D- All right, so um, it was... Uh, well, I think the most... Well, obviously, Dallas' defense has just played horrible, as they have for the whole, for the whole season. Um, of course, Nick Chubb goes out in the second quarter. Don't quote me on that. I'm at least 90% sure it was the second quarter. Um, they still had 307 yards. A bunch of guys stepped up for Cleveland. Dernis Johnson, 95 yards. Um, Kareem Hunt, of course, he had a big game, a couple touchdowns for him. And then Odell, uh, three touchdowns to the, I think, game ceiling touchdown for Cleveland on that end around. Uh, looked kind of bad because I was like, kind of like when I saw that, uh, the D lineman for the Cowboys get back there. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> this would be a big loss. But Odell takes it, gets around him, and then actually goes to the end zone for that 
Um, it's, uh, well, shouldn't have been that close. Um, we were up 41-14 going into the fourth quarter, and now, you, you know, it's a three-point game. So, obviously, Cleveland needs to learn from that. Even though they did win, they know that's not what they wanted. Um, I think it's a great learning experience. They are 3-1 and one going. Are they away? Andrew, do you know if they're away this week? Uh, I can look at that right now, although I really don't think home field advantage ma- matters this year with yeah. no fans. However, there was one uh, stadium that will be allowing fans that I will be touching on later. Uh, let's see. It is in Cleveland. All right, so, of course, Cleveland's going back home here. Um, both boy from Texas, Miles Garrett, and Baker Mayfield got to go to Dallas. Uh, both, I mean, Miles Garrett grew up in the same area as that stadium in Arlington, Texas. Uh, Baker Mayfield in Austin. Um, so, yeah, obviously it's a great learning experience for them. 3 and one going back home to play Indianapolis, who obviously Darius Leonard and Anthony Costanza, who both just very recently were ruled out for that game. Should be a fun one, obviously. Colts have the best defense in the league statistically. So, yeah, it should be a fun one. I'm going to pass this on to Dean. Especially the Cowboys game, it always came back to how bad the Cowboys played. No one really was talking about how amazing Odell played, or how well Ernest Johnson, or how well Kareem Hunt played, or how well Nick Chubb even played in the beginning. No one uh, really came back to talk about how well Miles Garrett played. How, uh, even though, in my opinion, I think he should be off the team, Andrew Sudeho played very well that game too. Um, Odell had an amazing game, three touchdowns. Uh, Jarvis Landry. Had a, a, a seems like a thirty yards touchdown pass. Yeah, Amazing thirty-seven. Pass. Oh yeah, on the money. On the money, hey, brother to brother, honestly, two LSU guys. Um, again, the Browns are three and one. Uh, now everyone around the league is coming is gonna do what they always do every year after the Browns. They're gonna come back and say the Browns are gonna make the playoffs. They said it last year. They said it the year before. The one in fifth, the old season season said it the year before, and now just the problem with that is when everyone comes to say it, the Browns end up having a losing record. Uh, I think it's just really a superstition for me, because, you know, in Cleveland, we know about, uh, especially also you being a Miami fan, you know a lot about heartbreak. Oh yeah, we can just never catch a break, man. <laughs> you cannot, and I'll be happy if the Cleveland Browns make the wild card this year, <laughs> and going back to heartbreak, like the drive fumble, all against our rival team, the Broncos. Um, in my opinion, I think the Browns, looking on the basic, basic, based off the season, I think they can go 10-6. and 10-6, yeah. or maybe 9-7. and seven. Or in that area, 11-5, 10-6, 9-7. I think that's uh, a, uh, I think that's a reasonable uh, mm-hmm. for the Cleveland Browns. I think the last time they went three and one. It was like the Tim Couch days. Um, who, you know, that wasn't even that good of a team. Uh, but this Cleveland Browns team, on paper, one of the best teams in the league. On paper, they have the best running back core in the league. On paper, they have one of the better defenses in the league. Because on the defensive side, more players need to step up. Miles Garrett, right now, is, I think, one of the main reasons he is in the run for Defensive Player of the Year is because he is doing everything. He's had three strip sacks fumbles in the last three games. That is some kind of record we haven't seen in a long time. That's just so I want to say about the Browns. I'm going to pass it back over to Andrew. A few notes about the Cowboys, actually. Uh, they need to continue. They need to play like they do in the first in the fourth quarter, like, in the entire game, because they had the fourth quarter come back against the uh, Falcons for their only win so far, and then they, and then, I mean, maybe it was the Cleveland defense who, you know, allowed a bunch of points in the fourth quarter, but, yeah. Another note is that C.D. Lamb caught his first two NFL touchdowns. Uh, he's he's played really well for them. He's slid right into that 
wide receiver number two slot right behind Amari Cooper, and he has really looked good so far in his first four NFL career games. Um, a game that, you know, was not as good as I thought it was going to be was the Chiefs and Patriots, obviously with Cam Newton testing positive for COVID-19. Uh, quick, I hope for a quick recovery for him. Um, you know, he comes back, even though I'm a Dolphins fan. Um, but Chiefs won that one easily, 26-10. to 10. Brian Hoyer, I mean, he, he does what, he did what Brian Hoyer did. Um, he took the horrible sack before the end of the first half, which just really just, I mean, that, that sums it up perfectly. You know, you're like, all right, w this looks promising, and then it falls apart. Um, but the Chiefs defense played out of their minds. Three, three interceptions, like two fumbles, um, a pick six. Uh, from Tyron Matthew, and, um, yeah, I mean, it was, Chiefs moved to 4-0, Patriots fall to 2-2, two two. um, I said this in the beginning of the year, in our NFL special, the Bills were gonna win that division, and it looks like they are, as the Bills are cruising right now, but, uh, one note is that Damian Harris, the, uh, Patriots' first round pick from last year, he is finally playing, he reached 100 yards in his first career game. Um, that is, you know, coming off the injuries. And, uh, you know, I I hope he does good. I mean, he, he was really good in college, obviously. Good enough to be a first-round pick. And, uh, yeah, um, that's going to do it for that game. Like I said, the Chiefs won that easily 26-10. to And uh, that's going to pretty much do it for the games um, for Week 4. Now, heading into week five, um, we have a few good matchups, starting with <clears throat> the Raiders and the Chiefs. This is a battle of AFC West division rivals. Uh, Chiefs obviously won last week, like I said, and the Raiders lost to the Bills. I mean, it's the Bills. They are a really good team. Uh, Derek Carr and, um, has looked pretty good this year for the for the Raiders, uh, Josh Jacobs looked, he, he's, he continuing off of that really strong, uh, 2019 campaign, uh, with, with more solid numbers, and, uh, I do think the Chiefs will win this game, however, it could be close, so, um, so, that's one of them, and the next one is Bills and Titans, Battle of Undefeated Teams, obviously the Titans, uh, did not play this week. They will have many players out this week with COVID-19, one of those being their number two wide receiver, uh, Corey Davis, who, uh, that's a big blow for them. And, um, you know, I, with all of these COVID, uh, issues with the Titans, I believe the, uh, the, um, uh, Bills will win this game. Uh, I, w I think it's going to be a, a good game. But, um, yeah, that's that's my take. And then the Giants and Cowboys. I mean, the Cowboys, they could arguably 3-1, and one, arguably 2-2. Two and two, But, um, you know, their defense needs to step up. Um, and then the Giants, well, I mean... Say, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah? I hate to interrupt, but could, wait, what did you say about the Cowboys? I, I see one and what could be two and two or what? Or three and one. Really? Um, maybe not three and one, but definitely two and two. They could. They could be zero and four for all we know. Yeah, they. For that Falcons game. Oh yeah, they they could be. They they should be. Argue. <laughs> they really should. But on yeah. paper, they look like a good team. But, uh, going up against the Cowboys or against the Giants, it's it's gonna. I think the Cowboys win this game just because of how bad the Giants have been playing, and um. Yeah, any other matchups that you guys want to talk about? Maybe you want to preview the Browns and Colts game, because uh, that will because that will also be a really good game. Uh, go ahead, I will hand it over to Kareem. All right, so two teams that both are on three game winning streaks. Defensively, both teams both are one of the best. Both are. The Definitely, both, I think, might be a top five defensive. Browns have the most takeaways in the league with 10. Um, Colts, statistically, have are the best 
one points allowed, rushing yards, passing yards. Um, Colts three and one coming off a big win against the Bears. Of course, Browns we just talked about coming off a big win against the Cowboys. Browns are three and one. Colts are three and one. It should be a great matchup. Mm-hmm. Darius Leonard and Anthony Costanzo, the linebacker and the offensive lineman, both definitely top players for this team, have been ruled out by Frank Reich. So should be a fun and very well contested game. Uh, Dean, would you like to add anything, or uh, has Kareem said it all? Uh, I think Kareem summed it up pretty well, honestly. So, uh. COVID issues continue to arise in the NFL, and uh, with the Jets had a little scare this morning where uh, coaches and players had to go home and work remotely this morning and probably into the next couple of days. But I ask this question to you guys, Kareem and Dean, and any viewers at home. Uh, Do you think that this season is going to get uh, postponed, canceled, um... I don't think so. I think they can fight through it like the MLB did. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to open the floor to Kareem Dean if you want to go first. Um, I'm just going to keep it short and simple. Uh, the NFL will not um, go into – it will not cancel because when you look at the MLB, especially the NBA, they came back in late July when it was at its peak. And they figured – I mean, they did have a bubble and whatever. But they still came back and f- found ways to uh, play the game without with being while being risk free mm-hmm. during its peak. So my answer is no, especially because coronavirus is definitely on its decline. Uh, Kareem, uh, uh, go ahead and uh, that's, give you that's answer. definitely a tough question with the way it's gone for the Titans. Obviously, Patriots two superstars mm-hmm. and Gilmore. And Cam Newton getting COVID. Um, I think it's a bit early to judge. Even though the Titans have had about 18, maybe they're at 20 now, COVID cases. But I think it's quite early to judge. I think maybe by halfway through the season, we see what happens. And if it just keeps going, I could see the season, uh, some games getting canceled. And maybe uh, some games uh, or the season getting uh, postponed, to say the least. Uh, there have been a few games that have already been pushed back for this week. The Bills and Titans will be on Tuesday. Um, so, uh, one last note about the NFL. Uh, it regards a head coach, and not Adam Gates from the Jets, who should also be fired, but we are talking about Bill O'Brien from the Houston Texans, the coach and GM. Uh, I mean, I can only imagine that they... This had several contributing factors. Um, yes, they came back in, in the wild card uh, game against the uh, uh, Bills last year. But, uh, I mean, how can you trade DeAndre Hopkins? How do you do that? It's just, I don't understand it, especially when you only get David Johnson back. It's just, and then obviously the 0-4 start uh, to the season this year with losing to the Vikings on this past Sunday. But um, it's, it's you saw it coming from a mile away, and it was only a matter of time. Um, so that's my opinion. Uh, Kareem, if you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, give your opinions and, you know, uh, who. Um, and, uh, yeah, talk about this Bill, o- Bill O'Brien firing. Well, I think after the te- the Texans lost three games, everybody thought Bill O'Brien needed to get pack his bags and leave Houston. Um, of course, I'm a hundred percent on board the decision. Um, you know, getting Kenyon Drake for DeAndre Hopkins to pick. Really, come on, guys. Um, I knew from the start Bill O'Brien. Uh, Kareem, not- it was David Johnson, not Kenyon Drake. Or David Johnson, my bad. I'm yeah, sorry. I believe they traded David Johnson because they had Kenyon Drake. Yeah. So. Um, um, I didn't think Bill O'Brien deserved the GM spot. Now, there may have been something in the locker room or something like that was between Bill O'Brien and DeAndre Hopkins, um, but I don't know. The Texans, they really uh, need to get get their game together, uh, work on their craft, 
and I don't know. It's not. I don't know if it's like. Oh, that's kind of tough. Panic mode. Do this. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Do the Texans and the Texans fans need to hit the panic button? I do not believe so. I this team has all the talent in the world with Deshaun Watson, and I mean David Johnson has played well, but you look at DeAndre Hopkins' numbers over there in Arizona, and you're like, man, like it's just not worth it. And I not it's you want to give your opinion or Kareem? Do you think it's time to hit the panic button? I'm gonna flip the question back to you. All right, um, I'm gonna have to agree and say. You definitely need to start being concerned, but you do not need to panic. I think uh, refresh uh, four weeks in, new coach, uh, I think new system. Uh, I think obviously there was the scuffle between Deshaun Watson and Bill O'Brien in practice. Just the chemistry wasn't there. So I agree. You do not need to hit the panic button, Texans fans, but you do need to be concerned. Uh. Yeah, Bill O'Brien uh, has been fired from the Houston Texans. Uh, has it come out that they have a new coach, or will they be announcing that uh, over the weekend? I'm not sure. Uh, I, sh- I will be excited, though, to hear what uh, they decide on. Yeah. All right, uh, that is going to do it for the NFL for Week 4 and the Week 5 preview. Um, into the MLB, uh, it has been crazy so far in the MLB playoffs. Uh, I am so excited. Um, it's, it's been a wild ride how we've got here, and now that it was here last week, but now we're into full effect, full swing here, um, into the division series and into the championship series, which are, which the AL will start on Monday and the NL will start on Tuesday. But, um, yeah, we had the Dodgers sweep the Braves that series. I mean, I think we all saw it coming, especially with Denelson Lament not being on the roster again. But game one, Clevenger had to leave in the second inning, I believe. Um, so Dodgers won game one, five to one. Game two, the Dodgers won six to five. Now, one note from game two was that the Cody Bellinger robbed home run. That was an insane play. I mean, <clears throat> Cody Bellinger obviously did not have a great season this year. Obviously, did not put up the MVP numbers like he did last year. But um, the that that really got the teams going. Um, uh, Machado got fired up. Uh, Mookie Betts had a little uh, silly uh, when he was walking in from right field. He waved over to the Padres dugout and was like, "Bye." I, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but uh, the, the reaction by Bellinger in the dugout was great. He just stared into distance for like 10 seconds. Um, good times. But uh, And then game three, 12 to 3. I think once they fell down 2 to 0, uh, uh, Jace Tingler was like, from the pod, uh, the Padres manager, was like, I, there was no way. I didn't, I, there was never, never really a ch- I mean, There was a chance, but. Not likely that the Padres would come up on top, and we saw that with the Dodgers. They are a scary team to face. Obviously, the one seed, but um, yeah, uh, Dodgers move on to face the Braves, who beat the Marlins in three games. Um, the the Braves and the Dodgers are the scariest teams right now. The Braves' offense is firing on all cylinders. Travis Darno, who ended the season in a little bit of a slump. Uh, he has broken out of that. He hit that loud home run um, off the train tracks, I believe, uh, in Houston. But um, they win game one, nine to five. Uh, game two, two to nothing behind. Uh, Ian Anderson has looked great in the postseason behind his um, second ever start, and uh, and then they win game three, seven to zero. Uh, but uh, throughout in the middle of that. Game 3, Corey Dickerson tried to save the Marlins season with a diving catch with the bases loaded. It unfortunately did not pan out like they wanted it to. So, uh, Game 1 is on uh, is going to be on Monday, October 12th. So, it actually starts Sunday and Monday. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a good series. Um, 
the the times have not been decided on when it's gonna start, but yeah. And then uh, the Astros. I mean, it they they won the series three to one. I mean, we all don't like it unless you're an Astros fan. But um, they win game one ten to five, game two five to two. Then the Athletics try to come back nine to seven as they win game three, and then game four was eleven to six. It was eleven to four heading into the ninth inning. The Athletics tried to come back with two in the ninth. It just was never gonna be enough. But um, Astros are a scary team right now. Their bullpen has looked good. Uh, Anoli Padres, I believe that is his name. Um, he looked pretty good. Christian Javier and Jose Urquidy, uh, I believe coming out of the bullpen, both looked good. Uh. It's just the Astros got in by this by just barely. Obviously, they were under five hundred, but you know it 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 all changes when you get into the postseason. And then the New York Yankees and the Tampa Bay Rays going into a game five tonight at seven uh, p.m. I'm going to do a quick preview of this game. We have Garrett Cole and Tyler Glasnow. Now Cole pitched game one and Glasnow pitched game two for the Rays. Expect them to not go very long. Uh, into the game. Uh, my dad and I have been talking about this since last night after the win, and what we've decided on is that Cole was probably going to go uh, three or four. Depend- it all depends on how big the Yankees' lead is by that time because if the Yankees don't have a big lead after, like, you know, the third inning and we're only up by one, we want to have Garrett Cole out there. He is a monster in winner, uh, winner go home games. Um, obviously with the Astros last year, who pitched in, like, two of them, um, but, um, so, if he, if it's a close game, head after the third, we're gonna keep him in, and go four or five, and then, if it's not, then you only go three, then potentially, at very, at the very best, you could have him for game three of the ALCS against the Astros, uh, yeah, Tyler Glasnow pitched in game two, he... He's an interesting case because obviously the uh, the Rays have a fantastic bullpen. Nick Anderson, Jose, um, oh no, what's their name? I I forgot his name. It's um Diego Castillo. That's his name, uh, not Jose. Um, Diego Castillo. Um, that bullpen obviously is one of the best in the league. Obviously, the um, Athletics had the best one in the um, regular season, but. Tyler Glasnow might go two or three, just because he is on very short rest, only two days rest. Cole is on three ga- days rest, but um, yeah, the that is going to be a great game. I'm going to watch all of it. Uh, I'm gonna my heart is gonna be skipping a beat every other second, <laughs> but um, uh, it's gonna be a good game. I highly recommend you watch it if you if you have um any interest in baseball, but um, yeah, um. But game one, Yankees won nine to three. Then they lose two in a row, seven to five, and then eight to four. And then last night we answered back with five, with a five to one win. Uh, Gleyber Torres hit a two on home run. Um, he has been quiet this division series after a strong two games in Cleveland. But uh, Luke Voigt hit his first ever uh, career postseason home run. And then the uh, a sack fly by LeMahieu, and then the OBI single by Higashioka uh, really put us over the top. And then, but one problem with last night's game was that Bryn threw almost twenty pitches, Chapman threw like twenty five, so that is a problem. Um, he they have been our best two relievers, no doubt. Uh, Bryn and Chapman, obviously. However, Chapman started the year off slow after coming back from COVID, but so anyway. I, I'm not sure how this one is going to play out, how the managers are going to use their bullpen, but uh, all I know is that it's going to be a good game tonight at 7 Eastern, like I said. So, uh, yeah, potentially uh, we could have the Lakers win the finals tonight and the Yankees beat, and the Yankees move on to the ALCS. Now, I cannot believe I am saying this, or anyone would ever hear anyone say this, but starting right now, Everyone who is not an Astros 
Dodgers or Braves fan is now a Yankees fan because they want to see a Yankees versus Astros rematch. You cannot, no fan of baseball can tell me that would not be entertaining. That would be so fun to watch. Um, but I surely want it to happen. I want us to crush the Astros and uh, make it to the World Series and then obviously win number 28. That's, that's the uh, end goal for any team to win a championship. But I don't know how this is going to play out. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it for the MLB. Um, like I said, the uh, championship series, the Astros and then the Rays or Yankees starts at Sunday. Um, and then the Braves and Dodgers starts on Monday, October 12th. Um, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New Flame Sports Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and hit the like button. Comment down below what you think is going to happen. Or anything we said that you want to give your own opinions about. So uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for episode number 6.